Hello everyone in this video, let us use the script now to get the details of a workflow. Now in the previous video we talked about uh, using script now to get the list of all the workflows in uh, your Jira instance and uh, I think uh, it can be really useful but you can do a lot more you can actually get details of the workflow now talking about workflow if you look at uh, workflows in Jira it is kind of a state diagram where you have uh, different states so if you look at uh, this uh, workflow here I'm looking at default Jira workflow you have states like open resolved close, in progress and so on. And if you see a line here, like if there is a line, an arrow in a specific direction, it means that you can move the shoe from this state to this state. So basically, it is a transition. And uh, this is of course a diagram view, but if you look at the text option here, text tab on top, you can actually translate the same workflow in this uh, textual form, in a, ta in a tableau form. So you have different statuses. And by the way, when you're working with the workflow, status is something that needs to be a global, globally defined in your Jira instance. So in your Jira instance, you can have 50 statuses, but you don't really want those 50 statuses in each and every workflow. So what needs to be done when you try to edit a new workflow, try to create a new workflow, you basically link it to a step and you only select those statuses that you need. So in a workflow, you basically have steps that are of course linked to a status. Uh, and when you look at these different steps, for each and every step, there is a transition ID or, a, or there is a transition. So it means that from open state, you can either go to, so basically from open state, you can either go to in progress, resolve and close. So these are the destination uh, steps, but the route you will take is very important. And that route is actually the transition. And again, the transitions can further, I mean, these transitions, they have a name. And usually when you look at any Jira issue, when users are interacting with their issue, when they are trying to do some work, maybe they want to move the issue from open to in progress or in progress to resolve, they will click on a button on top. And that button is nothing but this uh, name of the transition. So these are very important concepts in Jira, like the most fundamental and important things that you need to know if you are learning Jira, if you, know, if you want to know how Jira works internally. And having these transitions, there is a reason for having these different transitions. So uh, the reason is that when you do a transition, you can do a lot of things. Like you can capture the information from the user. Maybe you want to do some automation. Maybe you want uh, to, tr to trigger some external systems. So these transitions are definitely very important. Now, what I want to do today is I want to basically show you that we can fetch these details using script runner and you must be wondering why why bother doing this well if you're writing scripts that are trying to do something with the issue like transitioning the issue or maybe you want uh, to do some automation you want to maybe uh, check all the workflows in your Jira instance maybe you want to uh, compare them uh, you can of course do it manually, but uh, there is a way to, to do it programmatically using script owner because using script owner, you can uh, use the, J J the Jira APIs to get the same information. Now, if I show you the script, the script is basically using the workflow manager. So we, in the last video, we used workflow manager to get the list of all the workflows. So if you simply do workflow manager dot get workflows, 
you will basically have all the workflows in your Jira instance, but we want to do more. Now, the first thing that you can do is, of course, uh, and, and right now I'm basically using log to print few things that I want to print. Like the first thing that I want to print is the name of the workflow. And for each and every workflow, then I want to do further things like uh, for the first workflow, I want to know the linked status object. So these linked status objects are those statuses that you see. Let me just comment out this piece of code. So we'll uh, come back to this in a moment. So basically, if you do dot name, you will get the name of the workflow, all the workflows in your Jira instance. And uh, when you do get linked status objects for each and every, it will basically turn uh, for that particular workflow, all the linked status objects and you can iterate over them and you can print their individual names. So it will basically print a list of all the linked status objects of a specific workflow. Now, if you go back to your uh, Jira instance, and if you run this, so you can see here that I get a list of all the workflows like workflow Jira, workflow copy of Jira, workflow new workflow and so on. Now workflow copy of uh, Jira is the workflow that I am looking at right now. So we'll just focus on it. So this is the workflow copy of Jira. And I can see the list here like open in progress, resolved, reopen, closed and on hold. So on hold is of course uh, used is basically the status but uh, the step name is the on hold step. So if you look at this, you have the same information. Now we can of course do a bit more. Now for each and every linked status object, you can further find out the transitions. So for doing that, what I will do, I will, uh, as I mentioned before, this get linked status objects is uh, a list. It will, I mean, you can further go into it. So for each and every status, what I will do, I will use another method called uh, get linked step. This is basically a method of a workflow for an individual workflow because we are using this IT. IT is basically the item of all the workflows, individual item, individual workflow. So for a specific workflow, you can use a method called get linked step. And if you pass in the status object, which we already have the individual status object, you will get uh, the name of the name of the step. So if I comment out the last line, and if I just run this piece of code, uh, basically, we, we want to know we want to basically get the list of these, uh, uh, or rather list of these steps, like we were able to fetch on hold, but I want on hold step the name of the step. Uh, and this is important because based on this, we need the transition from we need to know the transitions which is in this case, there is no transition, but for for every other step, we do have some transitions. So if I run this again, I will get hopefully the, I'm talking about the workflow, copy of, copy of Jira workflow. And we have the list of statuses, which we, which we saw earlier, but I wanted to basically show you that we can also get the list of steps. Now, when, when we have the list of steps, we can use uh, one more method called uh, for each and every step, of course, get actions. So now for that particular step, it will uh, return you the step, the object, and you can use another method called get actions. And this get actions will uh, basically give you the list of for each and every step. It will give you the transitions. So actions, we were talking about actions yesterday, it will give you the actual transitions. Now, if I run this, and if I now take a look at it, it will, so I, I want to basically focus on workflow copy of work copy of Jira. Uh, we have the list of status, and we then have the list of uh, all the individual steps. But for each and every step, we have list of all the transitions, possible transitions for open. You can see here that we have start progress, resolve, close issue. 
for on hold there is no transition which is uh, the correct information now for transitions there is also a transition id and you will need the, need this transition id if you are trying to make a transition programmatically now i can also do something like this dot id and uh, you will get the transition ids instead of the names and uh, if you look at this now for copy of jira workflow i want to focus on uh, this part here so for the first open step we have uh, the 452 transition ids which is uh, which is correct for for in progress we have 301 5 and 2 so this is also correct and it is correct <laughs> so basically why we need this transition id we need this transition id because uh, let us say you have to make a transition programmatically so you can't just make up so transition is no status people ask this question a lot that you know i want to change the status so status is not really a field it's not really a drop down field that you can change that you know change it from open to in to in progress it is basically uh, using the transitions that you move from one status to another status so for making a transition you need to first validate whether you can make a transition or not and the user who is trying to trying to make a transition can do it so basically you may not have the permission to make a transition because we also have conditions in in these transitions for each and every transition there is a concept of condition uh, there is also a concept of validator there is also a concept of post function but Basically, we need to first make sure that number one, there is a transition. Like for example, from open, if I want to maybe go to on hold, there is no transition. So it's not really a valid transition and it, it, it won't let you transition the issue from open to on hold unless you create a transition. So first we have to make sure that there is a transition and the user who is trying to do it has the permission uh, to make that transition. And once you are able to validate that this transition can be done then you transition the issue um, now this is very important because uh, it can only be done when you know the transition ids and now you know how to fetch the uh, transition ids and uh, i actually made a video last year on uh, how to make a transition if you search on my playlist how to make a transition i'm sure you will find it and uh, you can use this code to basically iterate or do this for maybe all the workflows if you have to <laughs> i'm just saying that you know you need to know how it works and i think it is always good to know how in how internally jira behaves especially the workflow part because workflows are really important as I, i've you know i've been talking about uh, uh, since last video so we will continue looking further in this i will probably go back to the script where i showed how to transition an issue it won't be much different from last year but i may want to also cover a few additional things so i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today thank you very much